Okay, we have another integral here today. We've got the integral from zero to infinity of e to minus x cubed dx. Okay, the first thing I noticed with this is just the similarity of this to the Gaussian integral. If we look at the Gaussian integral, or like half of the Gaussian integral, but there's another version that goes from minus infinity to infinity. That one's just gonna be e to the minus x squared. And for this, we just there's a known value for this. For the whole thing from minus infinity to infinity, it's gonna be square root of pi. So for this, it's actually just square root of pi over two. So what I was hoping when I did this is that hopefully it would come up with some kind of nice value. It'd be nice if it was like square root of pi cubed or something like that. Unfortunately, this one's not gonna be quite as elegant as the Gaussian integral, so don't get your hopes up too much. But the other thing I was thinking was, I wonder if we could do a u substitution in order to get it in this form. So like what I tried was, if I set u equal to x to the 3 halves, doing it this way, x cubed is gonna be the same thing as u squared. So it works from that standpoint, but the thing is you need to take a derivative on this. But doing it this way, when you differentiate, you're gonna create another term, and then we'd have to substitute again. And so this way, I didn't really find this to be very helpful. So what I wanna do instead on this is make my substitution for the whole exponent. We'll set u equal to x cubed, and then solve for x, taking the one third power on both sides. So we have x is gonna be equal to u, to the one third power. I'll take a derivative to get a dx value. Using power rule, we get one third u minus two thirds du. That's. So now I'll go ahead and substitute this. So first with infinity, infinity cubed, that's still infinity. Plug a zero in, we're still at zero. So our bounds stay the same. That's pretty nice. Now, this piece right here, this is just gonna become e minus u now and our dx is gonna be this. So let me just reorder this first. I'll bring the one third up front of the integral as a constant. Then this u minus two thirds, I'll put this right here, and then we'll have our du on the end. But then what do we notice here? This thing here, this is, in, this is set up perfectly to use the gamma function. Okay, we have our formula for the gamma function over here to the right. We have this perfectly set up. Our variable here is u instead of x, but the bounds are the same. So I think we're in good shape to use this. One thing to know about this, the gamma function is like a generalization of the factorial to real numbers. So like for gamma of t that we have right here, for an integer t, this is gonna be the same thing as t minus one factorial. And we also have a really similar formula to this that we can use without using the factorial where we could say, because it's got the same exact property as the factorial. So if we have gamma of t plus one, this can be written as t times gamma of t. So before we go ahead and do this, one thing I want to do to get this completely in the right format, the exponent we have here is t minus one, and here we got this minus two thirds. In order to set this up, I can just get rid of this, write minus two thirds as one third minus one. We haven't changed it, but we're now in this format where we're subtracting off a of one. And doing it that way, like our input value in here, the way we have t here, that's just gonna be this one third. So just pattern matching with this, we're gonna have this one third in front. This whole thing here is gonna be just gamma of this, which is one third. So we end up with one third times gamma of one third. And this is actually a fine way to do this. This can be our solution. Another way, we, using this formula here, we can kind of go in reverse. This isn't gonna to help too much, but we can actually write it in a different form because we can take, if our t is one third, we can put it in this gamma t plus one form. So doing this, we could also write it as gamma of four over three. But now this here is actually kind of difficult to get an exact value for. So what I did is I actually put this in Wolfram Alpha to get an estimate on it. And what they had for this was zero, approximately 0 0.8929 and a bunch of other decimals. So, so yes, I agree. This is not quite as nice as the Gaussian integral and this is not as pretty a solution as square root of pi over two. The only thing I can say is at least we get the three back everywhere. So that kind of helps. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.